I was always interested in airplanes, even as a small child. And uh, flying in a plane was just the most exciting thing I could imagine. Of course, there was never an opportunity to fly. My mother was a widow. We lived in abject poverty, actually. In a way, maybe that hardened me for what was to come later. It's an honor and a privilege to be here today. I can see all your eager faces. I hope after I finish, you will carry away something of what I've talked about. You know something about World War II, I assume. I was 17, I graduated from high school, and the Army Air Corps was looking for uh, candidates to put on airplanes. I was a pilot training, and I was going to be a real hot pilot. However, the Air Force decided otherwise. And they said you had a choice between going in the infantry or going in as a gunner on a bomber. And I was the nose gunner, which was right up in the front of the airplane. We uh, entered the war zone in Italy and became part of the 15th Air Force. This is my crew. These were the guys that were with me on the airplane, all 10 of us. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm the only survivor at the moment. And at that time, we were on the petroleum a campaign to knock out all of the oil and gas supply that Germany had. My squadron had seven different V-24s, and we flew very close together because that was protection for us. Now uh, I'm on my way, finally at last, into battle. Uh, my first mission now. I didn't know what to expect. And then, all of a sudden, anti-aircraft fire from below. One of the anti-aircraft shells punctured a hole in the wing, the right wing. And then the fighter planes hit us, one after the other. And they were coming right straight in on my turret. And I was doing my best to defend against these guys. Then one of my guns jammed completely. And that was a sick feeling. And then the other one jammed too. I looked at that wing, and I said, uh, mm, I'm not going home in this plane. I'm not going back to my bunk. There's going to be a bunch of empty bunks in the tent tonight. And then the pilot says, OK, going to bail out. Everybody's got to get out of the plane. Statistics at that time said that whenever a four-engine bomber went down, half of the crew would die. In some cases, everyone died. People have asked me, uh, didn't they train you in jumping in a parachute? I said, no way. The Air Force knew you could get hung up a tree, you could break your legs, you could break your arms. So uh, we didn't have any training. So I sat in there uh, without a parachute on, and there was a big trap door in the bottom of the airplane. And the navigator was supposed to pull me out and when I get out, and I look for my friend, the navigator, my buddy. He was gone. Now, where was my parachute? Right next to that open door. So I snapped that on in a hurry. I just dived out head first uh, without even thinking. People said to me after, weren't you scared to jump? I said, not really. I was scared not to jump. I landed with a thump, knees came up, almost knocked me out, hit me in the chin. Now I found my tail gunner who had landed very close to me. In a few minutes, shots rang out. Bang, bang. We heard shouts uh, in German uh, uh, up on a hill not far away. The Germans had to get us from uh, where I had landed in Austria to the uh, interrogation center. And then we were marched into the camp itself. 
it was solitary confinement, total blackness, darkness, and total despair. Inside the solitary confinement, I, I vowed I was not going to tell, give, tell them anything they wanted. Name, rank, and serial number, I told them. That's all I'll give you. And then the next thing you know, the, uh, we got orders, you're moving out of here. They never told us where we were going. March us down to the railroad station. We spent one week traveling about 400 miles, I would say. It's freezing weather. It was the coldest winter they had in about 40, 50 years even. We were taken down to a 35 miles south of Berlin to a little town called Luckenwalde. We were then put into an all-purpose Stalag. Stalag means a permanent prison camp. And uh, this was the camp that would help me the longest period of time. March 13, 1945. Dear diary, starting a bit late, but I guess it's better than nothing. I had never kept a diary previous to this. Uh, however, at the same time, I thought, hey, my memory's going to fade out on me. I, I wrote down here what the menu was in Stalag 3A. At 7.30 in the morning, I, I was given half a pint of grass soup, which was weeds that were thrown boiled in a pot. You didn't worry about it. You just wolfed everything down, get it into you. Clothing you had was one set of clothing, and it was infiltrated with body lice, 100%. You wouldn't think it was possible with that. That's what we existed through. We didn't live through it. We existed through it. We had two guys in my back who decided they were going to escape. And they, unfortunately, they caught these two guys. And they dragged them back. They were tied, each one, to a straight-back chair, teeth knocked out, arms broken. And we had to go up and stand in front of each one of them and take a good long look at, if you want to escape, that's what will happen to you. And here I was, 19, a young kid, overwhelmed completely. Finally, one morning, we noticed all of our guards disappeared. Next thing you know, the Russians came in. They had a, an armored car that came in, tore down the barbed wire, and the doors of the prison camp opened. Just to be able to go where you wanted to, do what you wanted to, even if it wasn't that pleasurable, it is a wonderful, exciting feeling. And you, it's only good when you've been starved of that. Finally, I was on a Liberty ship heading out of Le Havre, of France, and into New York Harbor. And that's my hometown, New York City. And then finally, the most important moment was when we passed by the Statue of Liberty. That was when a big lump came up in my throat. And I realized that Something had been ripped out of me by the Germans when I was a prisoner. And that was my liberty. And before this, I had never thought much about freedom. And the only way I think anyone can appreciate freedom is when you lose it. And I said, thank God, I'm coming home to liberty and to my country. And I said to myself, God bless America. And I say that again today, and hopefully 
you'll understand what went on in my heart at that time because having lost the liberty made it so much more poignant to me.